and welcome back to the channel. I am shooting in yet another place in the house because I'm trying to find a place that has good lighting and I'm coming to the conclusion I don't have a place that has good lighting in this house, at least not for video. So, oh well. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to get, you know, I'll have to get some artificial lights so that these videos are a little brighter. So today, what I wanted to discuss in this video is a January wrap up of the books I read. Um, it was a good reading month. I'm very happy with January 2020. I keep a little notebook. So if you see me referring down to something, it's probably just my nerdy little notes I keep. <laughs> So I read 11 books in January and I'm just going to go through them in the order I read them. For an overall bird's eye view, I read four classics, five contemporary fiction, one mystery, and one nonfiction. The first book, it's Harry's Trees. I already talked about it in a video, so I won't repeat myself. But if you are the kind of person who who enjoys uh, contemporary fiction, literary fiction with some magic fairy tale, whimsy involved, you will like Harry's Trees. And the second book I read this month was The Stone Diaries. I also talked about this in a video, but just that I had picked it up at the bookstore. And it's a winner of the Pulitzer Prize back in 1995. If my camera is moving, that's because my cat is hitting the table. All right, Henry, this book, I definitely am going to reread this book and I'm not going to wait long. I may actually reread it in February. Henry, please don't hit that table. <sighs> okay, maybe I should just get Henry out of the room. Oh, Henry. Oh, I know. It's a Pulitzer Prize winner, so that does not necessarily mean the book is going to be enjoyable to me. And this one did. It's hard to say why. I mean, we follow Daisy, she, she's born in 1905, her mother dies in childbirth, and she lives a very, she lives a very ordinary life, I feel, in general, but somehow I, I could not wait to get back to this book every time I had to put it down. It's just so beautifully written, and I'm not doing a very good sales pitch for this, but if you like beautiful writing, um, with a simple story, I, that, see that just dismisses, it, that, that doesn't give it enough justice. Anyway, if you feel like reading a classic that's a Pulitzer Prize winner, I recommend this, I really do. All right, the next book I read, I uh, after The Stone Diaries, I wanted something much lighter. So I went onto the library system because I wasn't in the mood to read any of my own books. It's funny how that happens. And I just saw what's currently available that I can download tonight. And I got The Night Sister by Jennifer McMahon. It was released in 2015. I read the ebook. I gave it three stars. It's a 3.68 on Goodreads. Take that for however you, you want. But yeah, I was just looking for something lighter and the description of The Night Sister really caught me. Set in in Vermont. I love almost any book that's set in New England, or I, I shouldn't say I end up loving the book, but that attracts me to a book. A dual timeline between the 1950s and today. It's a mystery. I felt, I was surprised at how well written it was. I really didn't, I didn't have that expectation, but I, I, I thought Jennifer McMahon, did, her writing style was very good. But the bottom line for me is it just wasn't my kind of book. I don't regret reading it. It was a four hour read. I started it at five in the evening and finished it at nine at night and I enjoyed it. I, so it was one sitting. I read it in one sitting. How can you say a, a book's plot did not propel you forward? It did. It's just the end and I don't want to give any spoilers, but the end is not what I would want for an ending. I need something different and I don't want to further explain that because because then I'd spoil it, but, and who wants to spoil the ending of a mystery? But anyway, um, not a waste of time, well-written, just not my kind of book in general. All right, so the next book I started, I read On the Banks of Plum Creek. I bought this in Walnut Grove, Minnesota. I took a road trip up there in the Winnebago, me and, and Zuzu, the puppy RV venturer, and I wanted to visit 
Laura Ingalls, you know, Walnut Grove. I, as a child, my mom read us the Little House on the Prairie books. And then when, when I was old enough, I read them myself. So I gave this a five star on Goodreads, if only for sentimental reasons. This, these books are very special to me. But I honestly think on their own merit, um, I saw something that said it, ages 8 to 12 is the recommended. Um, so on its own merit for an 8 to 12 year old, I still think it deserves five stars. I mean, their lives were hard. <laughs> you know, we're, we're so, this came out in, um, mm, let's see. This was released in 1937, but the period of time she's talking about is, you know, the latter part of the 1800s. And their lives, it was hard work, but the family unit is just so charming, so loving. Um, they're there for each other. The simplicity of their life and what brings happiness. I mean, it's refreshing after, you know, what things are like now for sure. So... The, the only thing I, I kept thinking, oh, I wish one of my grandkids were here, although I don't know if they would like it because, um, you know, they're still quite young. But I am hoping when they get a little older and they come visit Grandma and Avu, that's Portuguese for Grandpa, um, that they will let me read this to them. Or when they're old enough, they can read it to me. <laughs> All right, so after On the Banks of Plum Creek, I stayed in the classics. It's also a book that has a special place in my childhood heart because I remember my mom encouraging me to read Little Women. And um, it, I felt very grown up. Although, after having read this, this book is long. I wonder if I had like a kid's abridged version that my mom gave me. I, I don't still have it. I don't have anything from my childhood, but um, I, I just would be surprised if I read the unabridged version of that book when I was little, but I definitely remember reading it. I remember my mom asking me what I thought about Joe. I enjoyed it this month. I gave it five stars. Again, maybe that's the sentimental part of me, but it did impress me reading it. It's not going to be for everyone. The the um the pace the language you know this was i think um let's see 1868 is when little woman was released oh and by the way full disclosure and it took me all day i read the little women part i did not read good wives yet um i will but when you watch the movie it's like both of those combined so speaking of the movie even if you've never read little women even if you've read Little Women and you did not like it, I am almost sure nearly everyone would enjoy the movie. I mean, I, I want my husband to watch it with me uh, um, because I think he would enjoy it. It is just so well done. And that's actually what made me read the book. I had no into I went to the movie. I didn't intend to reread the book, but there were so many things that happened in the movie. I'm like, oh, that wasn't in the book, was it? I don't think that was in the book. Oh no, that couldn't have been in the book. So I wanted to reread the book and a lot of them were, not everything, but a lot of the things I thought weren't in the book were. So anyway, I highly recommend seeing the movie. And then if you're so inclined, if you've never read Little Women, then you may enjoy reading it more because you're already like invested in the spirit of the characters. Because I think the movie just does a great job portraying these characters. The actress who played Amy, I don't know who she is. I don't know that I've ever seen her in anything else. She was so good. And of course, the actress who played Joe was magnificent. Um, on a side note, so I used to live in Concord, Massachusetts, and that's, that's, that's where Louisa May Alcott lived. So if you are ever in Concord, Massachusetts, go visit the Orchard House. You will love it. I've, I've toured it several times. I've had my husband tour it with me. Um, I've had friends tour it with me. It's just a good time, even if you know very little um, about Louisa May Alcott. You will be educated, and when you are there, you really do feel something that is of another time, so. I would encourage you, go see Orchard House. All right, the next book. I really enjoyed this one. Okay, just finished Little House, you know, On the Banks of Plum Creek and Little Women. So I wanted something a little more modern. And I went on the library system and saw what was available to download right that, at that moment. And I got the uh, ebook via Overdrive of An American Marriage by 
Tayari Jones. It was released in 2018. If you guys are a big contemporary fiction reader, you've probably already read this one. It's so well written. I felt it was. I, I was... I really enjoyed this book. Um, I was I was in. I was in from the beginning. Um, the plot is it's about a uh, a couple, and they they've been married for I believe a year. So they're at the beginning of their journey together when some horribly unjust event happens, and then that threatens their future. So the rest of the book unfolds how they deal with, I don't want to spoil anything, how they deal with the event that happened. And I, I, to me, this book had it all. It was so well written. It The plot, I, I, I read it in a couple of evenings, highly recommend it. it um, I gave it four stars. It's a 3.97 on Goodreads. Okay. So the next book I read, I wanted to get an audio book because I was going on a road trip and if you know me, uh, road trips require audio books. And uh, so I first listened to it on audio, but then I loved it so much. It is my favorite read of January that I needed to get the hard copy, Circe by Madeline Miller. Uh, this came out in 2018. This book, like, this book is just, Everything I need, everything I need. Oh, it was so good. It had me from the very first line of the book. When I was born, the name for what I was did not exist. I'm like, shut the door, sign me up, I'm in. Um, now, I remember Circe from college English courses, reading the Odyssey, and I totally forgot who Circe was. I thought she was the one who had like the siren song where, you know, the sailors had to put wax in their ears so they wouldn't be tempted to go to her island. That's not Circe. <laughs> Circe's the one who turned them into pigs. It's like, how did I forget the pigs? But, oh, this book, this book just brings Circe to the front. The, she is the heroine of her own story. I thought, I mean, this is just so incredibly written that I thought it had to be written like by a 280 year old angel witch because who else could write something like this? And then it turns out, oh, a 40 something year old from the United States who got her classics degree at Brown University could write something like this. I was shocked. I saw the author's picture because remember, I did this on audio, so I hadn't seen, you know, her picture. And when I saw her, I'm like, that's who wrote this? <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, I mean, and she has another um, book out that I'll read eventually, Achilles. But anyway, this has taken me down the Greek mythology rabbit hole. Um, in fact, I just, I pulled out my old copy of the Odyssey. This is from my college days. This book, this book even smells old. <laughs> but I wanna get Madeline Miller and Tayari Jones recommended getting the Odyssey by Emily Wilson. It's a translation that came out, I think, a couple of years ago. So I want to put that on my wish list of books. But anyway, so I pulled this out just to read the Circe part. Then I also, my brother Mark recommended a podcast to me. It's called Myths and Legends. Do you guys know about this podcast? It is so good. And it's not all about Greek mythology, but, but I've been like picking through the different episodes of the Greek mythology and I've listened to others. But that is really, really good. And it also prompted me to get, and I've heard about this book for a while. I haven't read this yet, but I'll probably be reading this very soon, The Lovely War. This brings in the Greek gods too, so I'm excited about that. But I digress. Let's keep on what I read in January. We're getting there. Okay, the next one I read was The Rent Collector. I read this for the monthly book club that I'm in here with the local ladies. It was, uh, let's see, it was released in 2012. I read it via the library's overdrive system. I gave it four stars. It is a 4.24 on Goodreads. It's set, set in a waste dump in Cambodia. It's a young couple with a chronically ill baby and they struggle to, to survive on the living that they make from sifting through the trash 
and recycling the items, which makes it sound like a horribly sad book. But it's not, it's not. This book, it's a book about books, which you're like, um, Susan, you just said it's set in a waste dump. It is, but trust me, it's a book about books and literature and this, this family and the community and the love and the hope. And it is, it is really well written. So if you've been contemplating reading The Red Collector, read it. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Okay, the next one I read, I got it from the library and I'm not gonna actually discuss it. I'm just letting you know, I read it and there will be more to come. It's The Ghost of Eden Park. I'm gonna do a road reads trip because the events that happen in this book are very near where I grew up. So then the next time that I go home, weather permitting, I want to do a road reads trip and take you to the locations in this book. This came out in 2019 and that's all I'll say for now because there will be more to come on this one. All right, my final two books. Oh, all right. <laughs> the 10th book I read this month is The End of the Affair by Graham Greene. I have not rated this yet because I honestly, like I try not to overthink my rating, but I am overthinking this rating, which just seems so appropriate since the characters in this novel, uh, the two main ones, overthink everything, especially the narrator. I, this is my first Graham Greene. I've not read any others. So I do want to read other books to see, is this his writing style or is this the style he chose for this story? I'm really curious about that. He's so dramatic, <laughs> but I am so dramatic. So in a way I'm rolling my eyes because he keeps saying the same thing over again. He loves, he hates. He hates, he loves, he believes, he doesn't believe. Like, just over and over and over. And yet, and yet I kind of like that kind of stuff. I, it's like the kind of, it's like the part of me that loves the old movies that are overwritten, overacted. I still love them. You know, the Betty Davis movies, all those, like, it's too much, but it seems to work for me. And that's kind of how I felt about this novel. Now, the rating on Goodreads, is um, 3.94, so that kind of surprised me. I didn't think it would be that high. So maybe I'm not crazy that I enjoyed it so much because I, I, I kept teetering between eye rolling and I, high, uh, I read this, uh, I got it free on the Kindle app and I highlighted this book like crazy. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's so well written. There's a lot of God talk in this book, a lot. Um, love, hate, believe, no believe, those are the big themes. <laughs> I think I'm gonna give this a good rating. I think I have to, and I kind of hate myself for doing that. My last book I read, oh, this was so good. I got it um, from the library overdrive system. I actually started it as an audiobook from the library, but then I wasn't going on any road trips and I'm just not in the mood to clean lately. So I'm like, I need to get the ebook from the library because I want to see how this story finishes. So I ended up then switching to the library's ebook via Overdrive. This is, uh, um, the author is Ya Jesse. It was released in 2016. So if you are contemporary fiction or historical fiction, you've probably already read this. <laughs> if you haven't, and you are historical fiction or contemporary fiction, read this. It is so good. And this is her debut novel. And she was in her 20s when she wrote it. It boggles my mind. We just follow generation after generation after generation after generation. It starts in the 1700s in Ghana. And we have two stepsisters who never meet. One stepsister gets married off to a white man and a British man who, um, what's the, the, um, the Cape Coast Castle. So she's living in the Cape Coast Castle with this white man through this arranged marriage. The other sister is in the dungeons of that same castle. She gets sold into slavery and sent to America. So we follow their descendants, you know, in Ghana and America, although it eventually merges. So it's kind of like short stories for the descendants and, um, when I was listening to it on audio, the names do get confusing. So if you do the audiobook, I recommend printing out, just Google online, the family tree for home going. And like I printed it out from my notebook so that you can kind of keep it straight. 
But man, I gave this a 4.5 stars. It's 4.22 on Goodreads. It is amazing. It is amazing that this is her debut novel and that she was so young to have written it because it really is, in my opinion, it's epic. So that wraps up. Oh, I'm gonna have to edit this big time because I see I'm over half an hour. So thank you if you've stuck with me this far. I appreciate it. I am gearing up for February. I'm gonna start making some plans. Like what does February have in store for reading? Hopefully I will be doing a road reads trip and I hope you'll join me. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.